Hello, welcome back to Hungry for History. I'm Dr. Ludi Clark. Halloween is just around the corner. What is your favorite Halloween treat? Recently, I have been learning about the history of Halloween and came across a Halloween cake called Soul Cake that was popular in the British Isles from the 16th to the 19th century. Today, I will show you how to make Soul Cakes and the story behind the Halloween treat. <music> In the US, Halloween has become a major costume party light for both adults and children. According to the National Retail Federation's annual Halloween survey, in 2019, Americans spent about 8.8 .8 billion US dollars on Halloween celebration, including 2.6 billion US dollars on candy. Candies are usually given to children who participated in trick-or-treating. Modern Halloween derived the name from All Hallows' Eve. In Old English, Hallow means a saint or a holy person. All Hallows' Eve refers to the evening before All Saints' Day, which is a Catholic celebration on November the 1st. All Hallows' Eve on October the 30th, All Saints' Day on the 1st of November, and All Souls' Day on November the 2nd together makes up Hallowtide. By the end of the Middle Ages, Hallowtide had become the most important time dedicated to remembering the dead on the Catholic liturgic calendar. Instead of trick-or-treating, adults and children would go soaring. During Hallowtide, the wealthy family in England baked cakes and bread and distributed them to relatives or poor neighbors who offered to pray for the souls in purgatory. This practice was based on the belief that prayers could help to lift up the soul in purgatory to heaven. In one of William Shakespeare's early comedies, two gentlemen of Verona, Speed, who is a servant, mocked his master for speaking purely, like beggar at Hallowmas. Solars would go from parish to parish during Hallowtide, baking for soul cakes and singing some such verse as this. The recipes for soul cakes vary from region to region. Generally, they were small cakes made with wheat, oatmeal, spices, and dried fruits. In Yorkshire, soul cakes were square, farthing cakes made with carrots in the center, commonly given by bakers to their customers, and it was usually to keep them in the house for good luck. In Lancashire and Herefordshire, soul cakes were known as hard cake. A kind of oat cakes made from oatmeal, sugar, fat, ginger, and brown ale. John Aubrey, an English writer in the 17th century, says, In his time, there was set upon the board a high heap of soul cakes, lying one upon another, like the picture of the shoe bread in the Old Bible. They were about the bigness of two penny cakes, and every visitant that day took one. The soul cake recipe we are going to remake today is from a household book compiled by Lady Eleanor Fittiplace in 1604. The book provides recipes for dishes and meals, medical remedies and tips for running the household. It includes a soul cake recipe. It says, take flour, sugar, nutmeg, cloves, maize, sweet butter, sack, a little ale balm, Beat the spice, put in your butter, your sack, cold, then work it well all together. Make it in little cakes, so bake them if you will. You may put in some saffron into them or fruit. The original recipe does not include details like quantities and bake time. I was not really sure what the texture of the cake would be. It took me a while to figure out two of the ingredients. Why is sack? Sack is a historic term referring to a dry white wine fortified with brandy. Known today as sherry, it was formerly imported into Britain from Spain. In Shakespeare's England, wine was available but very expensive, about 12 times more costly than ale. For this recipe, I bought a bottle of cream sherry from 
Trader Joe's. It is sweet and has the raisin notes, which is perfect. For this recipe, during baking, the alcohol will evaporate and the wine will reduce to a concentrate, add a sweet aroma to the cakes. Another ingredient I find to be even harder to come by is ale balm. Balm is a byproduct from brewing beer. It refers to the foam skimmed off the nascent beer during the fermentation process, which contains some liquid and yeast. It was commonly used as a liquid yeast in pre-industrial bread making. As a leaven, it also adds an extra flavor to the bread. I called some local brewers but could not get much help. I find a recipe to make a mock ale balm on a blog called Savoring the Past. The blog has a series about 18th century cooking. According to the recipe, I need an empty bottle, 8 ounces water, 8 ounces ale, a quarter cup flour, one teaspoon sugar, a teaspoon dry active yeast. Make sure your ale is at the room temperature to help the yeast get activated. Add the water to the bottle first, and then the flour to prevent the flour from being stuck on the bottom. Measure eight ounces of ale and add into the bottle, followed by a teaspoon of dry active yeast and a teaspoon of sugar. Shake the bottle well to get the flour mixed up into the liquid. Let the mixture sit for at least 15 minutes. To make the sole cakes, we need the following ingredients. Two cup flour, half cup ale balm, a quarter cup sugar, three tablespoon melted butter, one fourth teaspoon each of nutmeg, cloves, and mace. 1 4 cup raisins and 2 tablespoon cream sherry. In a large bowl, combine flour, sugar, and spices together. Use a spatula to mix them well. Add 2 tablespoon sherry to melt the butter. Mix well. Make a wheel in the center of the flour mix. Add in the butter mix. Take a half cup ale balm. Shake it well before you pour out the liquid yeast. Gently blend together the ingredients. Mix until you form a dough. The dough will be quite soft and a little sticky. Fold the raisins into the dough. You can have one hand hold the bowl and then the other hand continue to knead the dough. Once the dough has come together, take it out onto a well floured surface. Gently knead the dough by hand. Roll the dough into a long loaf-like shape. Cut the dough into 10 small pieces. Each piece is about 1 inch thick. Shape each piece into a disc about 3 inches in diameter. Transfer them to a baking pan. Let them rest for 10 to 15 minutes in a warm spot. Preheat your oven to 350 Fahrenheit and bake the cakes for 10 minutes. Flip them upside down and bake for another 10 minutes. Let the cakes cool before you eat. It's time to try out the cakes. Now they are completely cool. It smells really good and it feels a little bit hard outside. Let's break it into halves. You can see the raisins. It's a little bit crispy outside and a little bit chewy inside. It has a more soft cookie texture rather than spongy cake. It has different level of sweetness. The sweetness from sugar raisins and also the sweet aroma from the cream sherry. It is semi-sweet, uh, not really overwhelming because it, it only has a quarter cup sugar. If you like it sweeter, you can double the quantity of sugar. If you make those cakes or come up with your own version of soul cakes, tag me on Facebook or in the comments below. If you like this video, please hit the like button, which can help to get the video watched by more people. Please don't forget to share and subscribe. See you next time.